A high quality inspection camera can save you a whole lot of time and money. So the question is, is that $20 inspection camera just as good as the one that costs $279? Well, let's find out. In the first test, we'll see which inspection camera delivers the best quality of video footage. We'll see which inspection camera can extract a nut from inside of an engine. We'll see which inspection cameras demonstrate amazing light control and resolution. And we'll also see which ones really struggled. At a price of only $20, the least expensive inspection camera we'll be testing is made by Ekoaf. They claim it's a dual lens 1920p HD boroscope. It has two different cameras, one's on the very front of the cylinder and one is on the side. You simply attach the camera to the phone and then install the app. Once the app is installed, it's ready for use. They claim it has eight adjustable LED lights. The cable is 16.4 feet in length. It's supposed to be IP67 waterproof. The phone serves as the power source for the LED light. And the Ekoath is made in China. In the first test, let's compare the distance performance out to nine inches. Let's see if we could read the fine print on this drill bit case. On the phone screen, the Ekoath is a little bit blurry at one inch away from the drill case. At two inches, it's still pretty blurry. The camera does have a zoom and that's helping overcome the limited focus. The quality of the video on the phone definitely looks better. The video recording actually looks pretty good at one inch. Two inches is still a little bit fuzzy, but decent. At three inches, the image is pretty blurry and there's also a lot of frame lag and buffering. Definitely not a high quality camera. At a price of $26 is this Blue Fire brand. They claim it offers up to 1920p. It has nine adjustable LED lights. It has a 16.4 foot semi-rigid cable. It's designed to work with both iOS and Android. You can control the light directly in front of the camera lens or on the side of the camera. And the Blue Fire inspection camera uses the same app as the Ekoath brand. And the Blue Fire is made in China. Using the phone as a display, the Blue Fire is very blurry at four inches. Three inches looks about the same as the Ekoath and so does two inches. And one inch away from the drill case is a little bit blurry. Just like the Ekoath, the video recording with the Blue Fire seems a little bit better quality than the phone display, but not very good. At a price of $27 is this Cami brand. Just like the other two brands, the Cami brand can be attached to your phone. It'll take videos as well as photos. And the wheel controls the brightness of the lights. They claim HD 1920p. They say the sweet spot for clarity is between 1.2 and 4 inches. It has two different cameras. One's on the very front and one is on the side. And the Cami uses the iCamera app. And the Cami is made in China. The Ekoath and the Blue Fire use about half the phone screen. And the Cami makes use of the entire phone screen, which is pretty nice. The Cami appears to be in better focus on the phone display at 3 inches compared to the Akuath and the Blue Fire. Definitely looking the best yet at 2 inches. Pretty good resolution at 1.5 inches and 1 inch. And there's definitely less frame lag with the Cami. The video recording at 4 inches looks even better than the phone as a display. And look at the best yet at 3 inches and now at 2. And it's even looking decent but just slightly fuzzy at 1 inch. Definitely the best yet. At a price of $40 is this Hope Fox brand. They claim it's a 5-inch dual-lens endoscope camera with light, and it does have a slot for a memory card. It also has support for recharging the battery. It has a 5-inch IPS screen. They claim it delivers a 1920 by 1080 p resolution. They also claim 170-degree horizontal viewing angle, and Hope Fox is made in China. By the way, I did not set the correct date in case you're wondering. The Cami is on the left and the Hope Fox is on the right. And the Cami using an S22 Samsung as a phone display looks quite a bit better. Without the zoom and now with the zoom at 3 inches looks decent. The display also looks decent at 2 inches and now at 1 inch. On the left is a Hope Fox display and on the right is a video recording from the Hope Fox which looks quite a bit better. At 1 inch, the quality of the video recording is the best yet. At a price of $50 is this Bo Po Po brand. Try saying that fast three times in a row. It's a dual lens endoscope with a light 1080p HD boroscope with a 4.3 inch IPS screen. Screen. It does have a slot for a memory card. It even includes a 32 gigabyte SD card. They claim it has a 2000 milliamp hour battery capacity that offers three to four hours of continuous use. It also offers type C fast charging. They claim it's ideal for engine inspections, pipe cleaning, wall cavity checks, and HVAC systems. And the Bopopo is made in China. The display on the Bopopo with the zoom and now without the zoom at three inches. Two inches from the drill bit case looks decent and so does 1.5 inches. However, one inch is just way too close and the image is blurry. There's quite a bit of screen flicker with the video footage and the video footage quality is not as good as the Hope Fox. The Hope Fox is on the left and the Bopo Po is on the right and the Hope Fox video recording looks quite a bit better. At a price of $60 is this Viva brand. The previous cameras had two lenses, this one has three. They claim it's a 1080p HD digital boroscope inspection camera with a 4.5 inch screen. IP67 waterproof snake camera. Eight LED lights and a 16.5 foot semi-rigid cable. It even comes with a 32 gigabyte SD card. The screen resolution is 854 by 450. They claim the 2860 milliamp hour battery can support you for up to 3.5 hours of inspection work. And the Viva is made in China. The Hope Fox is on the left and the Viva is on the right. And the display on the Viva is the best yet. 
At two inches, the Viva is doing a pretty good job, and the Viva is definitely the best yet at one inch from the drill bit case. The video recording produced by the Viva at three inches is looking even better. At two inches, pretty good once again. And the video recording from the Hope Fox is on the left, and the Viva is on the right. Much better resolution and focus with the Viva. At a price of $63 is this Deptech brand. The inspection camera has a 4.3 inch screen. It comes with a 32 gigabyte SD card. It's supposed to provide a horizontal viewing angle of about 170 degrees. It's supposed to capture two megapixel crisp pictures and 1080p HD fluent videos. It has a 180 degree rotating camera. And the Deptech is made in China. And the Deptech is struggling to provide a clear image at three inches. A comparison of two inches and the Viva is on the left and the Deptech is on the right. Viva seems quite a bit better. At one inch, the Deptech is decent but not the best. If you're trying to use the live view on the display, the video recording does not help. However, the quality of the video recording is a lot better than the display. Less light glare and much better image quality with the recorded footage. At a price of $100 is this Hillysyn brand. It even comes in a pretty nice looking carrying case. They claim it captures a 2 megapixel clear detail with 2x magnification. They also claim it has a 2000 milliamp hour battery. Unlike the previous brands, this one has an articulating boroscope. It comes with a 32 gigabyte memory card. The previous brands have a 16.5 foot reach, this one has a 5.5 foot reach. It can rotate 360 degrees. It even includes audio. And the Hillicent is made in China. Using the zoom on the Hillicent at 3 inches from the drill bit case helps. And 2 inches the zoom is looking pretty good. And the display on the Hillicent seems just as good as the video recording. And the Viva is on the left and looks a little bit better than the Hillicent on the right. At a price of $120 is this Klein Tools brand. The claim is designed for plumbers. It has a 4.3 inch LCD screen. They claim it can easily capture images and video. Monitor kickstand for stability and support. It also has a 4.9 foot armored waterproof gooseneck snake. They claim a screen resolution of 854 by 480 pixels. They also claim a camera resolution of 1280 by 720. Most of the other cameras use SD cards. This one has a built-in memory card. It's supposed to offer up to two gigabytes of storage. And Decline Tools is made in China. And Decline Tools is really struggling at three inches. Using the zoom at two inches and the display just doesn't look as sharp compared to the Hillison. And one inch away from the drill bit case seems like a sweet spot for the Klein tools and the zoom is helping. However, not nearly as good as some of the other brands. And the quality of the video recording with the Klein tools is also not quite as good as the Viva or the Hillison. At a price of $130 is this Teslong brand. Just like the Hillison, the Teslong is an articulating boroscope. It comes with a five foot semi-rigid gooseneck cable. They claim exceptional image quality on a 4.5 inch IPS LCD color screen. It's also capable of capturing images or videos. It also has up to 1.5x zoom. It includes a 32 gigabyte SD card. It has a button on the back of the screen to start and stop the video recording. They claim a 1280 by 720 resolution. And the Teslong is made in China. And the display on the Teslong is by far the best yet and it's offering a very crisp image at three inches and also at two inches with the added benefit of having a zoom. At one inch, the Teslong is doing a great job. Viva is on the left and the Teslong is on the right and is very close. And the video recording on the Teslong is definitely very high quality. It looks great at three inches and two inches along with a very useful zoom. The Viva is on the left and the Teslong is on the right and is very close once again. However, the Teslong does seem to offer better color. At a price of $140 is this DXZ Taz brand. It's an articulating industrial boroscope. They claim it has a professional two-way 180 degree steering lens. They also claim a 4.3 inch IPS monitor. The total length of the boroscope is 5.5 feet. It's supposed to offer up to four hours and 15 minutes of use on a single charge. They claim it offers a two megapixel image and up to an 8X zoom. It's supposed to have a waterproof rigid gooseneck probe. It comes with a 32 gigabyte SD card. With the push of a button, you can rotate the image 180 degrees. And the DXZ Taz is made in China. And the drill bit case looks pretty blurry with the camera three inches away from the drill bit case. Finally, a much better focus at two inches. Looking even better at one inch and the test lung is on the left and is more zoomed in, but both cameras are offering great view quality on the monitor. And the quality of the recorded video looks just as good as a test lung. Definitely a high quality camera. At a price of $279, the most expensive inspection camera we'll be testing is made by Milwaukee. More specifically, it's the Milwaukee M Spectre 360. It also comes with a red lithium 2.0 battery and an M12 charger. They claim the 10 millimeter camera head allows for easy access while the cable balances flexibility and rigidity. The 4.3 inch LCD screen offers a 720p image. The LED light has five different brightness settings. The Milwaukee comes with a 32 gigabyte SD card. 
It has up to 4x zoom, and a Milwaukee is made in China. At 3 inches, the drill bit case is looking pretty out of focus. Unfortunately, adjusting the zoom is not helping. The dark area in the upper left portion of the screen appears to be damaged to the camera. The Milwaukee is looking more in focus at 2 inches. The test log is on the left and the Milwaukee is on the right, and they both look pretty close to the same quality. At a half inch and with 4x zoom, the Milwaukee is doing a great job of providing a close-up image. Comparing the test long's video footage on the left to the Milwaukee's on the right, they both look excellent with the side edge going to the test long for very close up image quality. Comparing the quality of the video recording of the Ekoeth on the left to the test long on the right, there's a huge difference in performance with the test long performing quite a bit better. Assessing performance is highly subjective, but the test long and the Milwaukee seem to offer the best quality image on the monitor or display with a rating of 2. The Viva performed almost as well with a rating of 2.5. All of the inspection cameras are able to record video, and the Viva, Test Long, and DXZ TAS performed the best with a rating of 2. Getting the camera close to an object needing inspected is not always an option, and several of the brands offer good focus at 3 inches out. The Test Long, DXZ TAS, and Milwaukee are able to provide a clear image with the camera only one half inch away from an object being inspected. A penny diamond quarter are laying on top of the piston that's inside the engine. Let's see if the cameras can read the number on the piston first. Let's first test the Ekoeth. I've adjusted the light to optimize performance and reading the numbers and letters on the piston is possible, but positioning the camera just right takes quite a bit of effort. The video footage for the Ekoeth looks a little bit better than the video displayed on the phone screen. Reading the numbers and the letters on the piston is pretty challenging with the blue fire. Even on the lowest light setting, there's just too much light. The video footage has a little bit better quality, but there's still too much light reflection. And the Kami is definitely providing a higher quality image than the Ekoeth and the blue fire. However, there's still too much light reflection with the Kami. And the video recording for the Kami is by far the best yet. And the Hope Fox display looks very good, but there's still too much light to read all the letters and numbers. However, the video recording is the best yet, and the letters and numbers are easy to read. Even on the lowest light setting, there's way too much light reflection on the Bopopo. And the video recording doesn't look too good either. And there's just too much light on the lowest light setting with the Viver. And the video recording also shows that there's too much light to read all the letters and numbers. There's also too much light with the depth tech, and not all the characters are readable. The video footage is a little bit better, but still not as good as some of the other brands. Just like the depth tech, there's too much light reflection and glare from the Hillysyn. The video recording is also about the same as the depth tech. And the Glide Tools continues to struggle and not all the numbers and letters are readable. Too much light is also causing problems for the video recording. And the test long is performing better than the Klein Tools, but there's still too much light reflection. The video recording looks even better and most of the letters and numbers are readable. And the DXZ Taz is performing the best yet and the characters are easy to read. And the DXZ Taz is definitely the best when it comes to capturing letters and numbers on video. And the Milwaukee has quite a bit of light glare and not all the characters are readable. However, the video recording did a much better job of capturing letters and numbers. Assessing readability of the letters and numbers on the camera monitor is highly subjective, but the DXZ Taz came out on top with the rating of 2. Several of the other brands received a rating of 3. For video recording quality, the DXZ Taz came on top with a really good rating of 1.5. The Hope Fox finished in second place with the rating of 3. And the Ekoeth is really struggling to produce a clear image of the dime and the fine print on the coin is not very readable. There's also a pretty big issue with light reflection. The Ekoeth is also struggling with light reflection on the penny on the lowest light setting and most of the words are not readable. And the Blue Fire seems to be doing a little bit better than the Ekoeth at producing a clear image of the dime and light reflection is a little bit less of a problem. The blue fire is also performing a little bit better with the penny. Less light reflection is really helping, but the image just isn't very clear. If you're looking for a very affordable phone inspection camera, the Kami is definitely the best of the three so far with pretty good image quality and a lot less light reflection. There still isn't enough resolution to clearly see all the letters on the coins. And the Hope Fox is definitely the best so far with very little light interference on the diamond penny. Not all the words are readable on the dime, but the words on the penny are definitely legible, but not perfectly sharp. And the quarter is going to really put all the brands to the test as this person on the quarter has a really shiny forehead, which isn't helping. And the Bopopo continues to struggle with light reflection, even on the lowest light setting. The coins do not appear nearly as sharp as the Hope Fox and not even as sharp as the Cami. And there's no point in attempting to use the camera on the quarter. And the relatively affordable Viva continues to impress and is by far the best so far at providing a sharp image. And the Viva is doing a great job of providing just enough light but not too much. And the Viva is even providing a very in-focus image of the quarter in the small text. Very impressive! And the depth tech is struggling with way too much light reflection making it difficult to read the text on the coins. The coins just don't appear to be nearly as in focus as the Viver. Unfortunately, there's just way too much light reflection from the quarter to read some of the words. And the Hillysyn's display just doesn't seem nearly as sharp as the Viver's display. However, the Hillysyn is performing better than the depth tech with light management but not nearly as well as the Viver. The text isn't quite as sharp and as easy to read compared to the Viver. And the Klein Tools is 
producing an image that looks less grainy than the Helison, but the image quality isn't nearly as good as the Vivers. There's also way too much light reflection with the Klein tools, even on the lowest light setting. And some of the words on the coins are readable, but the image lacks contrast. And the test long has given the Viva a run for the money. However, the Viva seems to produce more contrast and less light reflection than the test long. And most of the words on the coins are readable. And the test long now seems to be in second place on the test just behind the Viva. And the DXE is producing an image that's by far the most crisp and legible yet. <laughs> Even the scratches on the cylinder wall are very easy to see. Very impressive. And the zoom is also helping provide some very close up and crisp images. There's a small amount of light reflection, but this is by far the best inspection camera yet. And the Milwaukee is performing well, but not nearly as well as the DXE. The image with the Milwaukee just isn't as clearly defined or crisp. However, the Milwaukee is performing quite a bit better than average. Assessing performance on the three coins is highly subjective. However, the DXZ came out on top with an average rating of 1.3. The relatively affordable Viva finished in second place with a rating of 2 and Milwaukee third with an average rating of 2.3. Have you ever dropped the nut down inside of an engine? It's a nightmare scenario, but some of these inspection cameras can handle this without a problem. And the Ecos magnet is obstructing quite a bit of the field of view, but it successfully retrieved the nut. And the Blue Fire is obstructing even more of the field of view, but it too made easy work of picking up the nut. I really like the Cami quite a bit better than the first two brands, very easy work for the Cami. Unfortunately, the Hope Fox is just too big to fit through the spark plug hole. Just like the Hope Fox, the Bopopo is too large to fit through the spark plug hole. And the Viva continues to provide very crisp and in-focus footage and made easy work of the nut. And the Depth Tech is providing even more field of view than the Viva, but there's quite a bit of light reflecting off the magnet. And the magnet is obstructing even more field of view compared to the Viva and the Depth Tech, but it did make easy work of the nut. Unfortunately, the Klein tools did not come with the magnet. And the test long made very easy work of picking up the nut, but there's quite a bit of light reflecting back towards the camera. Using some flat black spray paint should fix this issue. And the DXZ offers a really good field of view, and there's very little light reflecting off of the magnet. Definitely the best yet. Unfortunately, the Milwaukee is blinded by its own light. Trying to find the nut is a bit of a guessing game. Assessing field of view, light reflection, and image sharpness is highly subjective. However, the DXZ came in on top with the best possible rating of 1. Several other brands received a very good rating of 1.5. Depending on what you're doing, camera diameter might be a factor to consider. And Decline Tools has a smallest diameter and only 6 millimeters. Several of the other brands are just under 8 millimeters. So which brand is the best? The left side of the scorecard includes some basic information that's not included in calculating the score. The right side of the scorecard includes graded areas and the scores they earned during the review. The last column includes the average score and the DXZ came out on top with the best average finish of 1.7. It's an absolutely amazing inspection camera, but it is very expensive at a price of around $140. The test long also performed well with an average score of 2.3, but it too is pretty expensive. The Viva really surprised me with just how well it performs considering a very affordable price tag of only around $60. That would definitely be my choice if you're looking for the best value. I've definitely been using the wrong inspection camera. All the videos on this channel are viewers suggested, so if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.